remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, here with you once again. And, you know, ordinarily, I don't like to use this show as a forum for, uh, you know, petty personal pissing matches. Normally, normally, I like to talk about what I think are important issues, political issues, national issues of the day. But I'm going to deviate from that real briefly, this one time and one time only. Um, some of you, I'm sure by now, have seen uh, the first two parts of the soon-to-be infamous Mark Bland episode of the show, where we taped a bit of a debate that degenerated into what was essentially the Jerry Springer show between me and him. The third and final part of that, by the way, will be out here in the next couple of days. But uh, since we started showing these uh, these first two parts, uh, I understand, I've actually heard it, uh, that Mark Bland went on his show and had some rather pointed comments about his time here. And also that there was another guest on Mark Bland's show, some guy named Jeremy, who through some kind of challenge about wanting to debate me. Uh, so I will answer both of those things. I'll answer the, the debate question here in just a little bit, but I wanted, first of all, to address Mark Bland's accusations that he made on his own show, and I wanted to clarify a couple things, because I think he may have led his viewership, his listeners, astray, if you will. So let me clarify what's going on. Uh, Mark Bland, if you heard his show, The Q, uh, he inferred to his audience, or he basically flat out told them, that he was censored when he came on this show. I believe that was the word he used, that I censored him, that I selectively edited his appearance on here. Now, Mark Bland knows better than that. He's well aware of what exactly happened, but I, I want to make sure that you out there are aware. I know my fans probably are, but some of Mark Bland's fans probably are not because he's kind of told half the story here. Let's kind of start from the beginning here. I've been on Mark Bland's show several times, and if you've heard any of those appearances, you're probably well aware that virtually any time Mark Bland asks me a question on his show, I'll get maybe two or three words of an answer, and then Mark just talks over the top of me, interrupts me, prevents me from thoroughly answering a question, or sometimes even tries to uh, purposely twist my words away from their actual meaning. Now, that happens on his show, and uh, he's certainly got the home court advantage there, so really, I can't complain about that too much. No harm, no foul, right? But by the same token, I have the same uh, leeway on my show. And as we taped this, uh, this debate, if you will, after a few minutes, and you know, part one, if you saw it, was, was pretty tame, and we talked back and forth, and Mark wasn't interrupted, and he was allowed to go on at, at uh, length about any sort of uh, opinions he had. But as I started to challenge him on opinions, as I started to ask him questions, and he started to ask me questions, when I would answer those questions, he started using that tactic again. He started trying to cut me off. He started trying to interrupt me. He started trying to twist my words out of context. And I made it very clear when he did that, that I would not allow him to interrupt me on my own show. It would not happen. In fact, I told him multiple times during that taping, that any footage in which he interrupted me would not air. He was well aware of it. And in fact, even after being told that, he persisted several more times to interrupt me. And I told him each and every time that when he did so, that footage would not be used. Now, Mark is putting something out there about uh, taking issue to, to a, a part where he grabbed the mic and I cut the camera and saying, well, I, I, that, that I grab the mic from him first. Yes, that is true. I did grab his mic first. And he says I selectively edited that, that out of the show. That is not the case. As I said earlier, I made it very clear to Mark, I would edit out any footage in which he interrupted me. The footage in which he says I grabbed the microphone from him, which I did, was another piece of footage where he was interrupting me. That's why I was grabbing the microphone away from him. So all I'm doing was making good on my promise that if he interrupted me, that footage would not air. In that respect, I did not edit Mark Bland out of the show. Mark Bland edited himself out of this show. Now, I know some of Mark Bland's fans out there who are listening to this and seeing this, uh, you may not agree with my stance, you may not agree with my actions, but I do think there is one small thing you need to take into consideration. What you may not realize, Mark knows it, 
uh, but his fans may not realize it, even some of my fans may not realize it, is that everything you see in front of you on this camera, everything you see around you, the microphone, the camera, the, the, the computer, the lights, everything, is what I foot the bill for. I pay for the whole thing. I'm the only one who invests in this show. Now, I'm not saying that uh, is any sort of woe is me tale. It's not. I'm not saying this is any sort of great shakes here. But what I'm telling you is that the fact that I'm the sole investor in this show, I'm the sole person behind it, is intentional. I invest in the camera, the microphone, the computer, the lights and all, so that my vision of conservatism, my message of conservatism, can be brought to the American people without being compromised by anyone else. In other words, so that I can put my message out there without having to worry about some advertiser getting cold feet or without having, having to worry about some program manager at a radio station saying, hey, maybe you should shy away from that topic. I don't have to deal with that. And that's by, that's by design. That's intentional. Now, that being understood, I'll be damned if anybody, Mark Bland or otherwise, is going to use my equipment, my camera, my microphone, my computer to obstruct my message to America, to misrepresent my message to America, to purposely keep my message to America from getting out there. It simply will not happen. So that's why he was edited. You may not agree with it, you may not like it, but I think you can understand since I'm putting the bill for it, I'm not going to let someone else try to use my equipment and try to obstruct the message that I'm paying for. As President Reagan once said, I paid for this microphone. Well, that's very much the case here. So that's, that answers your questions. That answers your concerns about the so-called censorship that Mark Bland endured. Uh, if you watch part one of that, Mark wasn't censored there at all, and it's because he didn't inter interrupt me then. I let him drone on about whatever the hell he wanted to talk about. Now, as for this debate idea with this Jeremy guy, I, I don't know who this Jeremy person is, never met him, and uh, I'm going to do my best not to paint this guy with the uh, broad Mark Bland brush here. Um, this Jeremy guy said that he wanted to debate me and, and maybe question me on a couple of issues and, and kind of get to the bottom or get a better read on how I got to my political viewpoints and, and how I got to where I am. Now, if you are sincere about that, I think that that could be a very intriguing discussion. I think it could be a very valuable discussion. On the rare occasion that a liberal actually does engage in discussion with me and actually goes into a uh, consideration of how I got to where I am and how I developed my viewpoints over the years, they're oftentimes very surprised. They're oftentimes, uh, I don't want to say impressed, uh, some of them are, but uh, they, they don't realize the depth of consideration that goes into a lot of this. So I think that is valuable to, to let people know that, if that's indeed what you want. So I like that idea if you are sincere about this. Now, I think you've got to understand, and again, I don't mean to paint you with the broad, the, the broad Mark Bland brush here, Mr. Jeremy, but I think you've got to understand that there is some hesitancy from my end considering what Mark Bland has done and how he's reacted to his appearance on my show. Obviously, Mark Bland came here and got an intellectual ass-kicking. I think everybody understands that. So it's understandable that he might potentially be trying to set me up to come on his show where he's going to be there and you're going to be there and you guys are possibly in cahoots. I don't know if you are, but maybe you guys are in cahoots and you're basically going to do a handicap debate and, and go two on one and both of you cut me off and, and try to take my words out of context and everything else. So I think you can understand my concern there. I'm not saying that's what you're going to do, Jeremy, but having not met you, having not been acquainted with you, I think you can understand my concern. So I have a solution. I have something that will take into consideration my concern for the show, but also give you the debate that you want if that's sincerely what you're looking for. I will go on to Mark's show and debate you, Jeremy, on one condition. And that one condition is this. That any time I am asked a question on that show, either by Mark or by you, that whenever I'm asked a question, I am allowed to completely and fully and thoroughly answer the question without interruption. Now, there's any number of ways that we can assure this. We could, you know, uh, give, give a certain allotted amount of time to each of us to answer questions, maybe 
three minutes per question, something like that. And of course, I would be more than willing to afford you the same exact courtesy that I'm asking for here. If I ask you a question or Mark asks you a question, you should have the same three minutes to uh, explain your answer uninterrupted. That's all I'm asking for. That I want to be able to answer your questions and Mark's questions without him interrupting me, without you interrupting me. Seems pretty simple to me. Seems pretty sensible to me. Now, if you guys agree to this, let me make one thing clear. If at any point I come on that show and either one of you interrupt one of my answers one time, the debate's over. Right there. I'll walk out. But if I can be assured that my answers will not be obstructed, will not be interrupted, and that I can completely and thoroughly answer whatever questions you guys have, then I will agree to it. So there's my response. There's my acceptance on the one condition. Let's see if you guys agree to it. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We'll see you next time.